Today we've got an Epson RD1S, digital range finder camera. In fact, it is the world's first digital range finder camera. How cool is that? This camera packs a whopping 6.1 megapixel CCD sensor. 6.1 megapixels, guys. I mean, Okay. This video is brought to you by Squarespace, and you guys know how much I love Squarespace. In fact, I use it for my own website, adamlearner.net. If you want to save 10% on your website and domain, use the code ADAM at checkout, A-D-A-M, and you'll save 10%. Even in today's standards, okay, 6.1 megapixels seems like not a lot, but the image quality that you can get from this camera far outweighs the number of megapixels. This camera shoots raw. And I 100% recommend you shoot RAW. In fact, when I first got the camera, I thought I had set it into the RAW setting, and I hadn't. And I, I shot JPEG, and the JPEGs were actually, actually, the JPEGs were really beautiful. The colors came out fantastic, but it was really baked in, and it didn't give me any latitude at all. You know, I couldn't open up any shadows. I couldn't really manage highlights. I couldn't do much with those photos. Now. They weren't bad. There was nothing wrong with those photos. It's just, you know, for me, I prefer to have the raw photos so that I have the latitude so that if I need to make adjustments, I can. Obviously, I never made that mistake again. The menu system on this thing is like completely archaic. I mean, it's a menu system from 2004. Um, not trying to make excuses, but you know, I just, uh, anyway, so once I got into the raw, I realized that the files had enough latitude, even though right out of camera, they're fantastic. The images that you produce from this CCD sensor are not images that require a ton of editing. In fact, one of the beauties of using a CCD sensor camera is that the images, the color is so fantastic. The fall off, all of you know, the, the way that the blacks look, the whites, everything, that you don't really need to do a ton of editing with these files. And I love taking this camera and shooting events with it. And I'm not talking about like, you know, professional events. I'm talking about like if I'm at a, a car event, I can shoot a lot of pictures with it and like literally just whoosh, grab them and convert them to JPEGs and just have them ready to go right there. It doesn't really take a lot of time to manipulate them because it doesn't need it. This thing is incredibly quirky and in a really good way. It's got some really fun things about it. It's got some really frustrating things about it, but overall the fun and the image quality completely weigh out anything that you might feel maybe not as great about. Um, the dial on the back here, this analog dial that gives you all of your information is absolutely gorgeous. It was made by Seiko and Seiko apparently is the, or was the parent company of Epson. I don't know. It's got this weird little pop-up it's like a film lever, you know, like with a film like Leica camera where you pop this thing up and then you, you know, wind the film. It's got a film winder. Now, this is like a, an assignable button, I guess, where you can do some scrolling and whatever, maybe magnifying an image. It's fine. It's just, you know, it's quirky. It's just part of the whole charm of this thing. The most charming thing about this camera is the film advanced winder. When this camera is, is off, you can't do anything. Turn the camera on, the dials do their whole thing, which is really beautiful. And then you have to sh cock the, well actually I'll take a picture. And then if I want to take another picture, can't do it. In fact, if I want to take another picture and I'm looking through the viewfinder, it won't even display the exposure metering. The exposure, it's like the meter just like shuts down. As soon as I cock the shutter and I look through and I press the shutter down, okay, now I've got my exposure meter and I can take a picture. Sounds like a film camera. Here, I'll do it again. I'll put it near the mic. So cool. Um, it doesn't have a remarkable buffer. So you can certainly get yourself in trouble if you want to take a succession of shots. Obviously, the shutter speed is completely dependent on how fast you can cock the shutter. But again, if you get a little bit too crazy, you will, you know, kind of outshoot the camera's buffer. But remember, it's a 2004 technology. It's a crop sensor. I don't know if I mentioned that, but I'll mention it again. And it's got 28, 35, and 50 millimeter um, settings over here for the lens. So right now I've got a 35 millimeter uh, like a Sumicron on here. 
I've got my little dial here set to 35. And if you look on the back here, like film cameras used to have like the little ACA di ASA dial. Um, this one has like the conversion dial. So it tells you at 35 millimeters, I'm actually, the conversion in 35 millimeters from the crop sensor is 53. So it's basically like having a 50 on here when I've got a 35. And you know, that's, that's really cool. The other thing that's nice about when I'm in the 35 millimeter mode is that the frame lines fill up the entire um, viewfinder. It's a one-to-one -one viewfinder. There's no crop, there's no magnification loss, full magnification. So you can literally have your, your left eye open if you're one of those people that does a lot of street shooting in your right eye and there's no loss of magnification. So you're basically what your left eye sees is the same thing that your right eye sees through the viewfinder. It just makes this such an easy camera to shoot with. Shutter speed goes all the way up to one two thousandth of a second, which is actually fine. Like with most CCD sensors, CCD sensors are very prone to being sensitive to um, bright light. So if you have extremely bright conditions, you're going to risk blowing out your highlights. And like most CCD sensors, they have very limited low light capability so that in a low light situation, it's not like you can pump the ISO very much up on this thing. And um, when you do, the uh, image quality just kind of falls apart. So I don't necessarily think of that as a bad thing. I just think that that's one of those things that knowing that you have to go into using this camera with the understanding that you're going to want to try to bring it out on occasions when you know that the conditions are right for this camera. Um, the camera feels great in the hand. It's really substantial. It's like completely solid made of like made from like a block of aluminum or something like that, made in Japan. It's just, you know, of that era when, you know, all of these cameras that were made in Japan were just made so incredibly well. The build quality of this camera is really fantastic. The fit and finish of this camera is fan fantastic. You know, it, it just looks great. You know, it just, everything about this camera is awesome. Um, how would this camera compare to, I would say, the only, the only camera that this you know, could directly compare to would be a Leica M8, which came out several years later. Um, they both have cropped CCD sensors. So essentially, the cameras are you know, on par because they're both M-mount CCD sensor rangefinder cameras. Well, I can say that having used a Leica M8 and having used this camera, I greatly prefer using this camera, probably because of the range, the viewfinder, that one-to-one. -one. I think the user experience with cocking the shutter and the analog dials and the whole kind of conversational aspect of this camera, you know, it just, it makes it a lot more fun. It's a lot more engaging to use. So if you were somebody who's on the fence, like, should I get an M8? Should I get an Epson? Well, the M8, look, it's a commodity, it's a Leica, it's got the little red dot on it. It's going to probably hold its value more. It's probably gonna be more sought after because people that are in the Leica realm tend to want to have Leica stuff. But if, you're, if, you, if you want something a little bit fun and different, you have some M lenses, whether they're Leica, Voigtlander, Zeiss lenses, they will all work if they're M mount on this camera, maybe a few exceptions, but for the vast majority, they will work. Um, especially if you're using a 35, 28, or 50 millimeter lens, that's kind of your sweet spot on this camera. So, is this a viable camera to buy in 2023? Definitely not. Is it a fun camera to buy? Absolutely. There's been such a huge movement toward classic digital cameras. I mean, it's interesting because a lot of the earlier digital cameras were really designed, the sensors were designed to look and emulate film as this sensor was, as the early Leica, you know, CCD cameras was, the early medium format, you know, CCD cameras, you know, even Nikon, I think the D40, D40X had CCD sensor, the D200 had a CCD sensor, the, um, there was a bunch of Fujis, the S Pro, whatever, S, they had the CCD sensor. All of those cameras, believe it or not, are making a comeback because there's something incredibly special about the color. That come, and it's like Kodachrome. I mean, that's what they were designed to look like. And to be honest, the files that come off of this sensor, even though they're only six, 
0.1 megapixels, they punch way above their weight. They look fantastic. Um, the color's great. The resolution is, is actually pretty damn good for, for what you're getting. If you're somebody who's looking for that kind of a recipe of being able to get, you know, files like pretty much straight out of the camera that have like a look that's not going to look like anything else, even if you add presets to it, you know, this is something up for consideration. Now, RD1s, RD1Ss, they're not that easy to find in great condition. So, you know, you have to kind of scour around for a little bit to see what you can find. And they're probably not as desirable as their Leica counterparts. So, you know, you really kind of have to, to want one of these. So I would say that if you are going to be looking for one, one of these, do your research, um, check out some of the forums and all those other kinds of things and look at some reviews. Watch my review. Hey, you're watching right now. Thank you for that, by the way. And don't forget to subscribe. I do appreciate that. I think I've had a great time with this camera. And, um, you know, if you find yourself with one, let me know. So that's it for now. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and we'll see you soon.